Good Wednesday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel. It talks about my trucks and cars and SUVs, and my motorcycles and dogs and the kid and life and all the good stuff. Good Wednesday morning there. It's hard to believe it's Wednesday morning. I mean, last night I was looking at the weather, and I'm trying to figure out why the weather thing's saying not showing me Tuesday's weather. I mean, I just can't keep track. Just too much going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just wow. time and how fast it seems to move as you progress in life. And look at all the space I have. If you watch my videos and my channel, I've got a fair amount of space. Not a McMansion ranch or McMansion house or anything, but I've got a nice uh, little spread here. Perfectly accommodating for me. And I need more space for all the vehicles I have. I'm sure anybody watches, <laughs> looks at my channel and says, yeah, this guy's running out of space. So you're hearing the word space, but it's great. It's just, wow. It's just, uh, it's just a, we just live in crazy times. And let's talk about space. I thought to myself this morning, at the last second, I thought space would be a cool idea. Elon Musk kind of spurred that idea for the record, but I thought, boy, it's such a broad name. Space. Look at the space of the vehicles that we've grown into. It's so crazy. Look at cars that are 20 years old, the 1980s, 90s cars. Even somewhat the 2000 vehicles, how they were so much smaller. And how now, like this Grand Wagoneer is just so spacious. And how you can get it in the L version where it's even bigger, like the Suburban. Or the Grand Cherokee L here, how this is so much more spacious than the previous generation. And I love the Mega Cab Rams. I've always have loved the Mega Cab Rams. I can remember as a kid seeing this, uh, these type of trucks back in the 70s. Yeah, Ram was, like, was one of the first ones kind of doing the crazy cabs on a Ford. And so I just love that big, spacious interior in the back, and I like the look. I think it looks, gives it a really cool look. Some people don't like that look, but I do. And I have slept in the back of these trucks, towing trailers and going places, and it really is a very comfortable, accommodating area. I mean, for anybody out there that um, doesn't know what these trucks have, and that back end there, it is just, it's a bed. I mean, it's a laying area of a bed. So, yeah. So, we've got the space conversations. And once again, I have another vehicle down in Tennessee that I really want to bring back home. My race truck. And boy, talk about running out of space. I actually moved a lot of the vehicles out of the way here because the wife was just not happy that my kids parked all of her vehicles right up in front of the house. So, I've kind of moved them around. Come on, Ginger. And the dogs already run the muck chasing the neighbors. Got my boots on. Got my funky boots on my dog. Kiefer dog just trashes me with all his dirty tennis balls that I play with. And uh, but here, so look here. Look at the Jeep versus the, the Ford Bronco. I mean, come on, can you see the difference in the width of this vehicle? Even though to agree, it's more kind of uh kind of offsets you because just the front end of this truck, the Jeep kind of narrows in. But look at the front windshield. Look at the front windshield. Then you say, yeah. So the interior of these two vehicles, the Bronco is more spacious. It is more accommodating. The Jeep, I'm always trying to push the seat back a little further, and it doesn't go back further. The Bronco, it goes back just a little bit further, so it has a little bit more space. Um, all the trucks now, all these Ford trucks and I mean, I just love how nice and roomy these trucks are. A lot of people uh, be critical of the Ford not having a six-foot bed on these F-150s. It's a five-and-a-half-foot bed. And versus this F 250 it has a six-foot bed. And that is a big difference on working out of this truck. It helps a lot. Ram offers a six-foot bed in the Ram 1500 package. So, why doesn't Ford, Ford, for all I know, Ford does, well, I guess if you go to the extended cab, then yeah, you do, but I don't think you get it in the Super Cruise, so you have the four-door, and that's the whole thing, all these trucks and cars have become so much more spacious that it's just incredible on how everything's gotten bigger, I mean, houses have gotten bigger, um, <laughs> the motorcycles, that's our Indian attire, got my Indian hat, got my Indian uh, jacket, Got my Indian shirt on. It's all about recognizing the Indian. Just thought I'd kind of change it up on the fact that uh, I've been wearing my Harley stuff. Because I thought to myself, on the Indian side, 
On the motorcycle side, Indian seems to be a more spacious touring motorcycle over Harley. Look here, this Dodge Charger. This car is so popular because it's such a realistic family car that you can just haul ass in. I mean, you just you can just have so much fun taking a friend, family, everybody fits in it. I mean, and it's respectively roomy for a performance vehicle that all your friends will be smiling as you're nailing it and hauling tail down the road. I mean, these Dodge Chargers are such a practical vehicle for having fun and working out of it and going to get the groceries. And that's the challenge. You get a performance vehicle and it's a two-door car and it's cramped, no storage. And it's hard to justify spending a lot of money for something you can live, use for limited storage. For me, this Dodge Charger, I've had many of them. They've been incredibly fun, really versatile vehicles that you can do so much with them. I mean, just incredible and hard to believe for me so many years later that this car is now borderline dangerous to drive because it'll get stolen. I mean, just beyond believable. That's the challenge. I never would have thought of that um, when I started buying these Dodge Chargers. I, I bought my first Dodge Charger 2005, I believe it was, a silver one, SRT package. And then I bought another one. And the Bumblebee Blue, B5 Blue package, um, I think in 2006, it had the Bumblebee stripe on it. And then I went through financial hardships and I lost all my, I lost from about 2008 on, I kind of lost all my car um, addictions because I went broke and I just lost everything and I didn't really have much of anything of the cars per se, and so as many years later, really wasn't until about 2000, I guess, 15, 14, 15, I kind of started getting back into the car thing again. So, and I've had the Corvettes and all, and you know, those things are fun, but not very spacious, but they're more spacious. Dodge Viper, but I'm just the type of guy, if I buy a car, I want the chance to go drive around in it and work out of it just as well as enjoy it. And a Dodge Viper, I was never able to cross the bridge to buy one. It was just too cramped, just too tight. I just couldn't deal with it. Some people like, you're crazy. You should have bought one. I drove them. I, have, I, I did. I have relationships with dealers. You let me go drive it for a while. It's just too cramped. It's just too much of a race car. I just couldn't justify the amount of money. You know, I'm not some rich ass guy. I've got to finance the thing. Are you paying a $2,000 a month payment on a car that sits in the garage? Wait a second. Huh? Whoa, wait a second. Wait. What? What? How much a month? Are you kidding me? These are $100,000 cars. What do you think you pay for these things? So here we are. Here on the motorcycle end, it's really incredible on Harley and Indian. It just, it depends what you're buying, what you're riding. Because on one angle, I'm like, buy the Harley. On another angle, I'm like, buy the Indian. But I don't know. Harley, it really has my eyes, opened my eyes more than ever to see that they really are going head to head with the Indian more than ever. And it's just, it's a hard call. But a few years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, a few years ago, I would have, Absolutely been pushing Indian product over the Harley product. But that was, that was basically 2019, 2020. And Harley has really come up with some nice stuff to really put it in Indian's face. And they are. So on the Harley, a lot of people are already talking about how the Harley's just too cramped. Which it is. It is. I mean, the Harley Davidson is more cramped than the Indian Touring. I should say the Harley Davidson. Touring line isn't as spacious as the Indian line. Um, you do have your seating posture, your foot controls, your your handlebars. It's much more comfortable, and it's of a bigger reach, and it really suits a bigger person. But Harley Davidson with this new Road Glide CVO, they've kind of addressed that in some ways. Because this new design handlebars. These new handlebars give you a whole different body posture. But, you know, once again, if you look here at the foot controls, I mean, I don't have a very big foot. This is like 11, size 11 foot right here. And look at, look at this. Look how tight that is. Okay? It's pretty much the same thing on the Indian. I don't know if I can sneak in here or not. I don't have the heel shifter on this one here. But I'll show you. Um, so here it is. If you put the heel shifter in there, it's pretty much the same. So on the foot, I can have to honestly say the feet are about the same. It's more of a seating posture and a distance from the handlebars. 
and uh, other things. So for Harley, I think new CVO is pretty much right there with the Indian, with this new design, um, new design handlebars on the uh, on the Harley over here. And let me show you. If you and I have another CVO re Road Glide, that's the previous generation. And if you look at the handlebars here, see how they're kind of more straight, all right, versus the handlebars over here, they angle in. I don't like that. I do not like it. <laughs> and so it kind of pushes your arms inward. It's just, I think that was a terrible design, really. But a lot of Road Glide people tell you they love the way that bike rides and handles and everything else. But I, I just love this new CVO. But here's the thing. So you go to the, the Indian... And the Chief product, and the Chief product in so many ways is competing with the Harley Davidson Lowrider S. This is the ST. So I, I watched a video of my daughter riding, and it's really incredible on how the Lowrider ST here, the Lowrider S, same bike, same same bike. The only difference is small front fairing, no bags. So it's a perfect example of the two um, competitors, Indian Harley. My daughter looks so much more proportional to this motorcycle, and she just fits the bike. When it comes over to this Indian Sport Chief, not so much. She looks like she dominates the size of this bike. She looks like this borderline is like her riding a small motorcycle. So the Harley on that side, it wins in my eyes. If you're looking for a Harley... Um, or I should say looking for that category motorcycle, you're going to probably, I think, be better in that motorcycle <laughs> over this motorcycle just because of the space. It's all about the space. Same thing. Here's the the uh, Chief Bobber. Now, Chief Bobber, what's interesting is you, you watch a video of my daughter riding the Chief Bobber with that elevated seat, solo seat this had. She looks small. Um, you look at my daughter riding the Indian uh, Chief Limited, Super Chief I bought. She looks small on that motorcycle. So it's just incredible on how this Sport Chief is the exact same frame, but it's just the different posture of the body and seating that throws off on how you look in the motorcycle. Um, the Honda Goldwing, uh, it's very spacious. It's comfortable to a degree. I think the seat could uh, use work on that. And so, anyway, so anymore, I don't think I would, I would pound my fists that Indian is the best choice for you riding a motorcycle, depending on what you're looking at. You know, it's more so going to come down to the Touring end. And I think that the Touring end has it over Harley just a little bit, not a lot, on being more spacious. But here's the thing. There's no doubt in my mind that the new generation of the whole touring line of Harley is going to happen in 2024. I just, it's going to happen just because of, <laughs> it's, it's right here. This is the next generation. So does Harley address the tour pack? Has a little bit more room. They move the tour pack a little bit to give the rear passenger more room. Uh, do they reposition the seat a little bit differently? I mean, so there's some things. The handlebar set up, so... I'd have to say the next generation um, Harley Davidson is going to give Indian every bit of run of its money. And how long is Indian going to continue to just run off? It's not really that old a platform. I mean, Indian's still very new on the updated touring bikes of the Dark Horse Roadmaster and the Indian Challenger Pursuit. These are only now coming into the fourth model year. Pursuit's only the second model year. Um, so the Challenger. In the uh, Dark Horse Roadmaster is from 2020 on, so I don't know. I just thought some people think Indians can do a big revamp. I can't see it. I don't think. I think it's too soon still. They just started building that product. Oh my goodness gracious! It's all about the space, and and yeah, like I say, SpaceX, Elon Musk, that all kind of spurred the uh, the thought process of me talking about space this morning. Thing, if you can you go side by side. Um, gator with all the space. And you get these side by sides now that'll hold like six people. I mean, you can even get them where they can hold like eight or nine people because these things have uh, grown. Everything's gotten bigger. It's just incredible on how everything around us in so many aspects has gotten bigger. Like I was talking about the houses. I mean, the houses 
have gotten bigger, but in some ways, I don't know. People are they're renting these apartments and condos. I think those things have gotten smaller. You see these uh, developments. Come on, pups. All right, they're waiting. Get up here. Get the morning going. It's not real cold up here per se. Probably overdressed this morning a little bit, but this time of year we get a cold because you think it's be hot as all get out. Hey there, baby. And she's just patiently waiting for your space. You have the dogs with their space with that new little uh, German Shepherd puppy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, all right. Get the phone here and get the light on, get the show going, get my space. And so, is that more than ever a decision that we make when we shop for vehicles? Is And I hear that a lot. Somebody's kind of fixated on want to buy something. And then they're kind of like, yeah, but it's just not as spacious as I thought it was. Or you see the videos, or you, see, you see the listings of houses, of how's the front look of the house in the street. That's, and you have this vision, it's some big ass piece of property and house, and then you actually go there. And the way the photographer took the picture, it's nothing. It's on like a main road. The house has does not have anything. Yeah, I've done this. I'm sure you'll be able to hear watch on the channel. Oh, my computer went dead. What's all that about? So, uh, get this thing to start up as everybody here watches my things. And you know what? My dog probably unplugged the plug. My, that dog of mine, Kiefer. Oh, yeah. Here it is. This dog that I have. Kiefer boy. He's just out of control. And this dog here, he's constantly pulling things out. Yeah, does anybody know this story? Jesus Christ, man. Sorry for the delay. In the... Oh, yeah, he pulled the plug out back here. So this is really nice. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. All right. Oh, my gosh. The, the Apple product has a lot of musk and Apple. You know, a lot of musk. He's getting a lot of attention. And a lot of people are starting to go after him. And you really just wonder what is going on. But we know what's going on. We know the fact that the good old Elon Musk is just... He's one of the wealthiest guys in the world. And he's gaining so much control. I mean, like space, SpaceX. That's what spurred this conversation. Space. What is Elon Mole? Elon Mole. <laughs> Elon Musk's main goal. He's, it's the space project. This guy wants to go to Mars. He wants to accomplish in his lifetime that you can go to Mars and live on Mars. This guy is heck bent on accomplishing that. And... And then his Starlink. Have you ever seen how many satellites this guy has up in the, in the sky? He probably has the most dominant space presence of anybody in the world. So, and I think a lot of the big governing bodies are getting very concerned that Elon Musk is going to overpower these governing bodies. And you know as well as I do, the government's like, no, nope. Nope, 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 nope. You are not going to overpower the government. No way. I mean, this gets to be radical, deep. Um, apparently, the EU, the European Union, is now going after um, X, Twitter, for its um, pro-Russia propaganda. Yes, the EU is calling out Elon Musk, saying that Twitter supports Russia pro-propaganda. And for the most part, they're getting ready to maybe just shut down X availability in most of the European Union. This is real stuff. That they're saying that, that Elon Musk is, is, is actually the disinformation social um, platform. And he's misinforming people. And it's all pro-Russia, you know, driven agendas. Wow. I mean, so what's going on? And so many people would be like, well... It's the Ukraine-Russia war. Do you really want to hear both sides of the story? Are we really hearing? I mean, here's the latest. Does anybody believe that Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson was going to set up an interview with Vladimir Putin and the governing bodies won't allow it? Do you believe that? I mean, that's what Tucker Carlson's saying. So why, why wouldn't they let Vladimir Putin um, talk? I mean, I don't get it. I mean, didn't, have we had, I mean, have we had previous conversations with this guy? So what's going on? So you have to really start to just scratch your head of what is going on in this Ukraine-Russia war. Now the latest is these arms manufacturers in this country are having a heyday. They're loving this stuff. They're selling weapons like not seen in modern times in years. 
and they're learning from Ukraine's mistakes of what to make and what not to make and what's used and, and the list goes on. And so many people are saying that we're, uh, you know, we don't want to be in Russia's space. I mean, we don't want to be over in Russia. We don't want to be over in Europe. I mean, in so many aspects, in so many ways, um, you know, we don't want to be in that space. So we're just using the Ukrainians to fight the war for us. That's the new, you know, that's the new saying that you're starting to hear more than ever is that's these politicians are justifying that we're over there in this war with Ukraine, giving them all this money to fight the war. We're just using their young kids' bodies. I mean, some are saying there's 500,000 young, you know, young kid, young soldiers. I mean, I, you just, it goes all over the place. But here's the thing about Elon Musk. The guy, if you think about it, the guy dominates the space. With his new Starlink satellite system, he dominates that over any other. I mean, somebody here watch my channel. I'd love to hear somebody else say, hey, man, you're not really accurate on that. There's more bigger space satellites out there and more than what Elon Musk has because they've been doing it for years. Elon Musk has started doing this stuff in moderate recent times. But here's Elon Musk showing video of how NASA is watching all of his um, accomplishments with his uh, missions of going to outer space and his rockets launching and then coming back down to Earth and being reusable. So, I mean, it's just incredible. But at the same time, I guess Elon is starting to get into a lot of other people's space. And that's what these governing bodies um, are starting to realize, that Elon Musk is the dominant factor that can control so much. Wow. Wow. I mean, here's Elon Musk yesterday talking about the UAW. He, his exact word yesterday was, if the U, if the big three cave to the UAW's demands, they all will go bankrupt. That's Elon Musk's exact words. And it's already, part of me is like, okay, yeah, I mean, I think that's it's, it's possible. But at the same time, it's, eh. It, but I think to myself, why would Elon Musk even do that? Wouldn't Elon Musk be wiser just to sit in the sidelines and watch... For GM and Stellantis drive themselves in the ground, that opens up the door for Elon Musk to maybe even buy up some of these manufacturers to, to make the Tesla product even more dominant. Think it through. Um, the, the big word out right now is um, Ford and GM, they don't know how to sell electric cars in China like Elon does. Yes, that's a known fact right now. Ford and GM, they're not having any success of selling your electric brand, but there's so many brands over there in China. There's a hundred plus brands of, of cars over in China right now that are electric. And the challenge is you can't build them cheap enough on our our side to compete with them. That's a real story and that's a real concern. And that's why much is, is sees right through all this is that his his um, salary for an individual would be half of what the big three is going to be or even borderline a third. As he offers stock options, Elon Musk gets a little more creative on getting the tenure out of people. He's putting the carrot in front of them that if they do this and do that, they'll be rewarded better than they will be a union member, per se. That's all very debatable, but the whole point is Elon Musk sees that this UAW is going to possibly drive Ford, GM, and Stellantis, a Jeep brand, Ram, into very dire straight times, and especially on the electric vehicle side. And but that's the irony here is here's Joe Biden yesterday going to UAW and he's walking around with them and preaching that they de they deserve higher pay and they deserve better working conditions. And yet at the same time, Joe Biden's a guy that is the um, guy pushing the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, that's going to change the whole makeup of the automotive industry stateside where we're going to witness the transformation of ICE to EV. And, and so many of the manufacturers and engineers and people know that the amount of hands needed in the advancement of automation of robotics is going to totally eliminate so many people's jobs. So on the one hand, you know, here's Joe Biden over there, you know, telling everybody, hey, you know, I support you guys making more money and getting better uh, benefits and better uh, hours. But you know, at the same time, this is the guy that's cutting off the hand to the future of their capabilities. I mean, it's just really is crazy. Chuck Schumer is there at a union rally somewhere, and, in, and the guys are there talking the exact same words that Sean Fain is talking about, and that's about how 
The big auto executives have made more money than ever, and now it's time for them to make more money than ever. And Chuck Schumer is sitting there, you know, yeah, yeah, it's time for these. And I think to myself, if I was standing there, I'd look at Chuck Schumer and go, yeah, but all you politicians are, are now richer than ever than any sitting politicians in modern times. How is that? How are you, Nancy Pelosi, and the list of many, you know, Mitch O'Connell, you can go through the list of all these Political figures, uh, Barack Obama, these people, Bill Clinton, the, Hil the, the Bill Clinton Foundation, Hillary Clinton Foundation, the list goes on and on and on. Every political figure here in the last 30 plus years is richer than rich. But these are supposed to be public servants to the public. Wow. So, yes, yeah, so if I was at the rally, that's what I'd be asking the, the, you know, Joe Biden to be like, how to come. How did you get so rich being a politician? Yeah, we know that answer to all those guys. That ain't going to go nowhere. I'd be shuttled. They, they would, they'd probably kick me off the line. Maybe even terminate me. Joe Biden would probably make a personal call and said, ice guy there, you have to fire him. He's, he just doesn't talk the way we're, he's supposed to talk. I mean, come on. Where we are, that's what a lot of Musk is experiencing. That's what the Russell Brand is experiencing. Russell Brand starts running his mouth about all this stuff information and at the same time uh poof all these women are now showing up calling him out as a you know as a dirt bag in so many ways he's a dirt bag that's that's what the media is now going to present to you russell brand that guy's a dirt bag he's a molester i mean who knows i mean yeah but at the same time right before this all kind of started happening he started showing incredible evidence of information that he felt was disinformation from the bigger powers to be. Wow. And that's where Alon's going. I've talked about it over and over again. For the last, ever since Elon has taken the path to buying out Twitter, I've questioned what he was doing. And even to this day, you got to in some ways question what the hell he's doing. And is he digging himself dig, you know, bigger and d deeper and just more... Um, media attacks, political attacks, domination. They're suing him. FTC wants to sue him for this. The, the SEC probably wants to sue him for that. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The guy's now the biggest punching bag in modern times. They would get rid of Trump. If everybody get rid of talking about Donald Trump every day of our freaking life, it would be all about Elon Musk. I mean, right now, in some ways, uh, Elon Musk should like Donald Trump because he, he's the buffer between all the – just the uh, – the negativity, the space, the space. Yeah, all these guys want their space. And that's what Elon Musk is all about, is, is about your space. And then you go to the artificial intelligence. And, yeah, you're going to have more space. You as an individual, as time progresses, are you going to have more space? You know, meaning, are you going to have more freedom from this artificial intelligence to do other things? And to separate yourself from others. I mean, right now, talked about it yesterday, uh, the home, the home front, so many people that remotely work. I mean, the number one thing I guarantee you'd hear out of the person's mouth was I have my own private space. I have my own personal space. Anybody that's worked in a big company, anybody that's worked around a lot of people, it's always about the space. And it's so, it's very challenging, especially if the individual next to you is totally opposite of who you are. And you have to put up their antics throughout the day. It's the worst. It is the worst. It's like, you know, death warmed over where you got to get out of bed every day and go to work because you're having to deal with these different personalities that you just despise. But it's called having to have a job and go to work. You don't think I've had to go through this through my life? You don't think I haven't had these type of relationships I've had to deal with even the customers? It's the worst. And so you want your space. So for the home workers... The remote workers, I guarantee you, the number one thing that they're going to tell you is, I feel so much happier in my own space, not having to deal with this very rude, nasty individual that comes to work every day that isn't fired for their um, just terrible behaviors. Who doesn't know these stories? I mean, it's just really bad. So the artificial intelligence, does that give us even more space? Does it free up your brain? Of more space? Is artificial intelligence going to make us stupider? I mean, there's so many things now where artificial intelligence now, I don't get on it, just so you know. I don't get on the chat GBT. I don't get on the artificial intelligence. I just don't do it. it it's so much time of sitting behind a computer all day, having to delve into information. That just isn't really I am. 
per se. I'm a guy that's out in the shop, cleaning my cars, working on my bikes, playing with the dog, riding motorcycles, taking care of projects. That's just who I am. Am I sitting behind a screen of a computer all afternoon when I get home from work? No way. No way. But so many people are today more than ever. And so now the word is now that you can talk to chat GPT and chat GPT talks to you like a human. Wow. So I think to myself, are we going to become stupider as time progresses? Because you're now don't really have to process much, much information. You just ask chat GPT. And that's where it's so dangerous. So many people are going to be looking to this artificial intelligence to give them guidance and information and their views and thoughts. And they're going to believe all this stuff. And it's going to even be worse than what the social media machine is doing to so many right now by brainwashing them that you can do whatever you want and there's no consequences. Look at Philadelphia. What a disgrace. The, the BLM and those of color, unfortunately, I mean, really it's sad, is what's the color that you're seeing the most dominant um, individual now that's raiding and looting stores? I mean, sincerely, this is deep stuff. And for me... You know, to go down that rabbit hole, oh, you get called out. You're a racist. But sincerely, what is the color of who's raiding all these stores? Um, I don't see many of me. I don't see many of me. It's bad. It's really bad. And the social justice system is training so many people that think that they have been um, shorted in life, that they have been treated fairly, and that they have no future hope of any opportunity that they're now so fixated on material things that they'll sacrifice themselves for material items, material things. And they'll do the boost program where they're going to, your, their friends are telling them, hey man, if you go raid the iPhone store and get a bunch of i15 phones, oh my gosh, you get three, four of those, you can probably make a thousand, two thousand dollars tonight doing that. So let's go do it. And that's what happened. In Philadelphia last night, the people were upset about a police officer not being convicted for shooting a person, probably of color, right? I mean, do you think they would be there raiding the stores if a police officer shot a person that looks like me? I mean, sincerely, would they? I don't think they would. So so it's all about the color. I mean, wow, should I have a conversation about color? Does that get deep? Do you, do you like the black cars or do you like the white cars? What's the most dominant car? I, I think it's white and black. I'm not even sure. We need to look that up. What's the most dominant color sold? My thoughts would be black. Wouldn't you think so? I have a car choice, motorcycle choice. I think black. So, yeah, just what a joke. What a joke. But here's what's, this is what's going to happen. For all these stores being raided by the looters that believe that the social justice is them stealing from others to enrich themselves at the expense of others, these All these buildings are going to be empty spaces. That's what's going on. Right now, Target just announced they're pulling out of New York. They're pulling out of uh, San Francisco, Oregon. Um, the, I mean, these major store retailers. I mean, how long are they going to take the punishment of losing all this merchandise? And, and then in many aspects, um, the people that work for them, putting them in do harm and, you know, the consequences that come with that with people beating the crap out of them. Shooting them, killing them. This goes on and on. So I think we're going wit <laughs> to witness, excuse me, the biggest empty spaces in modern times of all these big retailers that just start to close shop because they're going to figure out they can just have people order stuff online and they'll just have DoorDash or whoever deliver their product like Amazon does. You just convert your Target store into a major warehouse in a vicinity that's all locked down. And yeah, but then where does that go? Then these people just track the DoorDash people and loot those guys. That's where that all goes, right? Wow, it gets deep and heavy. We all need our space. That's one thing about life. I think we all like to have our space. And that's why you have a man cave if you're a guy. If you're married and you don't have a man cave, I highly recommend somehow you figure out how to get that man cave. I think that just keeps your space and life in an equal balance. And for Elon Musk, it's all about the space adventure. And what happened to Jeff Bezos? It sure is like, seems like Jeff Bezos. And what happened to the Virgin uh, Airline guy, the, the British guy, that was all over the uh, trying to duplicate what Elon Musk is doing? What, what are these guys? I haven't really heard much about what's going on with Jeff Bezos and the Virgin Atlantic guy with this venture to try to get to space. I think Elon Musk has a better fit and the better 
potential of that happening. So, wow. But we witness in the next 10 years, Elon Musk getting to Mars with humans that can actually stay there and survive. Will we witness that? I would say probably we will. But wow, is that crazy? Anyways, hey everybody, thanks for watching my channel. I'll give you some space now. It's some quiet. I'll turn it off. And what am I doing today? You know, my friend, um, Chris, who's uh, my riding buddy now, he's got me fixated on getting a trike. You know, my wife just doesn't like the idea of jumping on the back of a motorcycle. And part of me is like, if we had a trike and she could sit on the back of that trike, would she feel more confident? Eh, I get a lot of mixed feelings in that. But here's the thing. I test drove a Honda trike like two, three years ago down there at Timber Con in Winchester, Virginia. They had this really nice Honda Goldwing, brand new, customized trike. And I rode that motorcycle. It was a cool looking bike. Everyone was excited about the thing. I rode that thing, and that thing was so freaky. That back end of that bike walks around, follows all the imperfections of the road. I mean, it was freaky. And I ride four wheelers. So I know, you know, how these upright, high positioned, different body position riding machines ride, me and a trike. But I never realized it was that radical. So I walked away from that thing like, no way. That thing's just too freaky. It's too much dancing around. You're up to 60, 70 miles an hour. And that back end's like the truck and trailer back there. That thing's dancing around like you're going to wipe out. So my friend Chris thinks that the Harley-Davidson trike has a better, newer, updated uh, suspension. And he feels like that may be a different ride. So... It's Murphy's Law. Here's a used CBO trike in my area that I could go drive and ride. And I, But I just, I really think that if I ride that trike, I think I'm going to go down the road and I'm going to come back and go, no, it's just that back end follows. It's such a short, narrow chassis vehicle with a big-ass tire on each side. I truly believe that that trike is going to be the thing where your back end just walks around and it's just a freaky feel that you feel like that bike's going to make you flip. I mean, I don't know. So do you see that in today's adventure? I have to actually be up in an area today to work where that used motorcycle is at a dealership. So, wow. Does that play out? We'll see. Do I walk in with all my Indian gear and see how they, what they think about me? Or do I ride my CV or Road Glide up there and show them who the real boss is, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching my channel. Appreciate all the nice comments. And stay tuned for the adventures. Is it a trike adventure day? Do I buy a trike motorcycle? Am I getting an old man? I mean, I get it as you get older. And a trike is a good fit for a lot of people who can't um, balance that heavy-ass touring motorcycle that basically weighs, weighs a 1,000 pounds once you put gear in it. Put your, your spouse in the back of it and your body on it. You have 15, 1,500 pounds. Whoops. How many? Yeah, you got a lot of weight going on the road. So, everybody, thanks. God bless. Stay safe. Have a great day and stay tuned. I'm going to go test ride a motorcycle. Or am I?